Good morning. Oh, we're so glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Christ Church of Flagstaff. My name is Chris, one of the pastors here. Uh, a few of our friends are here in the room, it's, and uh, many of you are online watching this. We just wanted to say thanks for joining us and welcome. This is my wife, Christy. Hi. And she's awesome. The thing I'll tell you, she's going to help with our message today, but tomorrow, uh, it's tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah. Tomorrow is our 24th wedding anniversary, so... People have asked, what did you get your wife for her anniversary? I said, I made her help me preach a sermon. And uh, I love you. Happy anniversary. Today we're going to talk about fear. And one of the things I know is that for many, many families in our community, since school has shifted and school's being done online for the next several weeks, uh, and, you know, the near future, it, it's causing fear. It, it, it's causing frustration. We're having to make adjustments. And it's making an incredible impact, a big impact on many of us and our kids. It's impacting uh, those of us who are teachers in the education world, whether it's in the university, the, the school level, grade school, high school. And I just want to tell you, we have some uh, needs that our community is asking us, families inside of our church, just the community in general, of some different things that are happening. Our, our people we're talking to and listening to, uh, they need help with some, some place for kids to do activities, some socialization of kids coming together, uh, and maybe micro schools need help. The, some of the families need technological help and uh, supplies. And we're just trying to, as a church, um, connect people who want to help, who have the ability to help, with those who have the need. And maybe, um, you know, maybe you can spend a, a little bit of time each week helping uh, a family. Maybe you could spend a couple hours. You don't have kids at home, or you're in a place where you have some time. You could help somebody doing uh, school with their kids at home, uh, do some games, some crafts, and uh, maybe even like a Bible story or study. And we would just love for you to get involved in helping uh, some of our families. And, and for the moment right now, the best way you can do that is if you email us, uh, info at ccof.church. Hopefully that's going to come up on the screen here, and you'll see that but at info at ccf.church, you can let us know if you have resources. You maybe you have some supplies or you have a laptop that works pretty well, but you don't need and uh, you're not using. And a student could use that, uh, an old tablet or maybe a new one. Uh, or you have needs. If you have some way to help, you have time, resources, uh, or you have that need, just uh, let us know. And the best way to do that is, the, is that website, info at ccf.church. And, and I just want you to know, whether you're here in the room or you're online, uh, in August, our offerings, everything that's given to our church uh, in the month of August, 10% of that, a tithe, we're setting aside. We've already started doing this. Uh, just money, resources to help with these things as well. Because sometimes what somebody needs is just uh, some child care. They need uh, just a way uh, to get a resource or, or, or something that they can't they do on their own. Or people who aren't working because they have to stay home with their kids. And there's so many different ways that you can be involved financially at our church, and so many of you are, and, and I just hope you'll take advantage of those as you see uh, that you can go through the website, you can text uh, CCOF to that number that you see there, you can download our app, there's all kinds of ways that you can help with that. And, and again, use the email if you have things uh, that you want to help with that are time or resources, and then of all of us, do the best we can generously, we can help families with incredible needs in this, this just immediate kind of crisis that many of us are facing. I sat down a couple weeks ago with some parents from our church, and, and I was just so heartbroken to hear uh, some of their, their fear and their angst. And I was, uh, one of the moms that was there is a single mom, and her son is autistic. And uh, she just uses, he, he needs so many resources and things that happen at school. And she's just overwhelmed. And I, I sat with families who's uh, parents whose families have expanded because they took on foster kids and, and now have adopted kids. And, and now this just time is like dealing with things they never planned on dealing with. Family whose kids have special needs. As we just sat uh, out on the patio a couple weeks ago and I listened to them, uh, I just, it was just heartbroken. I think about if you're at home with a seven-year-old boy all day long, I pray for you because I had a seven-year-old boy and that would be hard. And we get used to our, our systems and our routines, and they're gone right now. And, 
And what was also, as I was just feeling so much empathy for these families, is I became extremely hopeful because what I know about this group of people who call themselves Christ Church of Flagstaff, who are followers of Jesus, helping one another follow Jesus, is that uh, that single mom whose son's autistic, one of the things that she also has talked about is that her rooted group, that's now a life group, has come around here, and like one of the couples in that group watch her son every Wednesday so that she can go to work, and she gets uh, just a little bit of a break. And at that group is providing childcare and friendship and support, and not just for her, I mean, it's, it's for each other. And, and that's what we do here at our church. And I'm just so amazed and so proud to be a part of a group of people who just take care of each other. And that's what we're going to do is uh, even more than we ever have before. And I hope you'll help us with that. Uh, Again, email info at CCOF. If you have uh, things or resources or ideas or you need something, whatever it might be, we may not be able to do it, but just let us know. And uh, this special offering, this, this just time of offering in August, let's just be as generous as we can. The other thing I want to mention real quick, this time we're having, we're going to talk about how to overcome fear, and I'm so excited for you to hear what uh, God has for us. We would love for you, even if you're in a room right now, you're online, just take out your phone wherever you're watching this. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button, that's a thumbs up, uh, on Facebook. For every, uh, every time someone likes or shares this message, this conversation, we're going to, as a church, donate $5 towards that fund to help families in need. So we've had uh, just a huge increase. And here's the thing. The reality is you're helping your friends. You're helping your friends on social media. Because trust me, I've seen what they're reading and posting. This is better than that. And uh, you just share this. And it, you don't know what God's going to do with this conversation about fear. And so you can uh, do that on YouTube, Facebook. Again, you're helping make a difference. On your behalf, we'll donate. And some of you in the room, you're not doing this. You're still watching me. Get out your phone. Get on this Facebook feed. There's plenty of bandwidth, like and share it, and uh, you can text your friends the link, because here's the thing, a lot of people in our community, including us, are dealing with fear, and we need help, and maybe the thing we give them is just a conversation that's focused on God and, and, and Jesus and how he wants us to overcome fear, and you can connect people who are far from him, the ones in the story of Luke 15, the ones who are far from God, who need his help. Maybe it's as simple as just a social media like And one of the things we've seen, and this is what we're going to talk about, excuse me, is is this a season in our life we're just seeing more and more fear? And Christy, you and I have talked about this a lot in the last few weeks. One of the results, one of the things that happen when we're living in fear is that fear drives us away from connection. And and it pushes us uh, away from being connected. Talk about that. How have you seen that? Uh, Yeah, I would say where that's probably the most true for me is um, that fear drives me away from connecting with people. Um, I I start to think things like, oh, they probably don't like me, not as much as I like them, or I think um, I'm I'm just annoying, or I'm a burden, or they're just feel sorry for me, that's why they're friends with me. Or maybe I think, oh gosh, I am so going to disappoint them and what their expectation of me is or how they think I should behave. So I just avoid or pull away. And um, I think when I was younger, fear probably kept me from connecting with God. I knew that I wasn't always living the way that God wanted me to live. And I, um, I really didn't want to change though. And so I, th- I thought, like, like the fear would tell me if I fully, totally live for Jesus, then I'm, I'm going to have to change or uh, he's going to take away all my fun. So I just kept him at a distance so I could keep doing what I wanted. Yeah, and I see that for me as like even in recent days, I mean, these last uh, few months, which I keep thinking will change and go back to normal, I, I just see that fear at times is getting the best of me. And, and one of the things we talked about where you and I are different is when I get into that moment of fear or, or anxiousness is I really avoid God. And I do it for probably different reasons. And I avoid real connection with others. And I try to just, for me, when, when fear creeps in or anxieties, I just get busy. It's just, if I can go do stuff and fix something or help someone else, maybe I just will like forget about what I'm dealing with, what I'm struggling with. Uh, and that's where I found myself as I'm 
doing all kinds of good things, you know, and, but I'm not really connecting with God. I'm not really connecting with other people. And even during this sermon series, I mean, just the way uh, the world works, the way people work, so we've been talking about overcoming fear, and it's probably been, for me, uh, these last several weeks, one of the most fear-filled seasons of my life, and just all of these things that are kind of like, I thought were dealt with, have been creeping up, and, and I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to do therapy right now. Uh, that would be weird. But you just said to me, even Monday, like, I'm just like stuck in this moment of fear. And you said, hey, why don't you just go practice what you've been preaching? And I was like, why don't you come preach it then, you know? <laughs> You're so smart. But you know, that's actually what I needed to hear because we're all, none of us are immune to fear. I mean, I've found myself stuck in it. And I just started doing the things, you know, that Scott and I talked about last week, that Garrett and I have been talking about. And I'm seeing God take care of those concerns and just hold those fears. Uh, and that's what we want to share with you, is just very simply, here is the, the truth that we've been learning and have to continue to go back to and remind ourselves, is that while fear drives us away from it, connection is actually greater than fear. And, and that's this whole series, is that there are things that, that God has put in our life and he's given us the opportunity to use to overcome fear in whatever form it is. And last week, we made the statement, Scott and I, as we were talking, if you haven't seen that conversation, it was awesome. I mean, he just shared so much wisdom. And, and go back and watch that. It's on there. And, and we said, ongoing fear is a warning light that our identity isn't fully placed in God's truth. And, and I think that it's that same warning light. When that's happening, in your identity, is it in God's truth? This issue of connection uh, is so important. But that statement really kind of does beg the question what is God's truth about connection, about connecting with, with uh, him and with other people? What do, you, what do you think? How do you see that? Well, I, I think we can, we can see God's truth in Scripture all the time. And in Matthew, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And um, I think we sum this up a lot of times by saying, Love God and love people. And the love we're talking about here is not just an emotion, but it's an action. And it means connect with God, connect with people. And um, it's, it's, it's a command because it's important. It's not an option. We must connect with God and we must connect with people. And connection is what will be greater than our fear. Yeah, that's good. And I think sometimes we use this this phrase, you know, love God, love people, the summary of that verse, that's familiar to many of us. Uh, I think sometimes, though, we use that language, and it becomes a little bit of a cop-out. Like, love is actually, when we say love, the way most of us talk about that, uh, and especially we talk about, well, I love God, like, I made a mental decision, you know, and that's a low bar. You know, that's not what John is saying, uh, or, or Jesus is saying in this verse. He says, love God with your heart, with your, with your soul, with your mind. That, that's all-encompassing love. That's action-oriented love. That's, that's not just saying, oh, I love somebody, but I don't like them. I'm going to mistreat them, but I love them, you know, because I have to, because Jesus told me to, or, you know, and, and that's how sometimes we put the bar of low for love, is it's not just a, a decision. It's all of us. It's all-encompassing. It's not a, a differentiation. I, I love them as a brother in Christ, but I just, I don't want to be around them. The physical, the spiritual, they're not divided. And Jesus shows us that at his best, it's always both. And we've talked about that many times as a church family, is the action-oriented love. It, it's what Jesus did on the cross, and that's what truly leads us. When we can have action-oriented love in our life, that's what leads us to our connection with God. Yeah, I, I agree, and as I've grown in my relationship with God, I've, I've learned that I can connect with him in all different kinds of ways. Um, I think the way that's my favorite way to connect with God is when I'm having um, conversations with my friends about God, and I get to hear the cool things that are happening in their life. And, um, and another way that I like connecting with God is when I'm praying and I can I can feel how he's changing my heart and my mindset. It's yeah, that's good. Yeah, because it, it's real. It's a, it's a real conversation. And for me, it's that connecting with God is when, 
you know, in our family, I'm, I'm usually awake first, and it's, it's pretty quiet, just like me and the dogs in the morning, and or being in nature, you know, of going uh, for a walk here uh, nearby in the woods, or when I get a chance to be at a beach, oh, that's just like my happy place, you know, with God, and, and an amazing sunset. It's just these moments that when I'm mindful of them, I pay attention to them. You know, I've even thought of uh, even just times being in different places where you see uh, like a panoramic view of a, a, of a landscape or, or a city. I mean, I just these places where I connect with God. And again, most of the time, it's just a simple few minutes uh, in the morning, uh, just doing those simple things that we know help us connect to him. And let's talk about the second part of what, what you said, connecting with people. You know, for me, I'm always around people. I mean, that's my job as a pastor is uh, it, it's being around people and helping them and, and just connecting them to God and to Jesus. And, but I'm not always connected with them. And, and we understand that, right? Is you, you could be around people and not be connected to them. Even at home, I find myself rarely alone. Like for me, being around people is never the issue. Uh, but I need to just be intentional with that connection with you, with our girls, and, uh, you know, Susie, our middle daughter, is getting ready to go to college. So you're very mindful of, like, oh, the clock is ticking fast. Like, Wednesday, you know, uh, is literally when it comes. And it's just, like, how am I connected? And, and for sometimes for me, now that baseball's back on, i got to turn off the Dodger game and uh, just be around you and the girls. And maybe for me and my personality, I always think, well, nothing's going to happen. You know, like, if it's not Instagram worthy to post a picture of us playing a game or doing a craft, is it worth doing? as a family, and I kind of get in that weird mind space, and, and some of the best moments is just when nothing happens, but we're just in the same room together, you know, and, and, and it's intentional. It takes time and effort to connect with people, but we need it. Yeah, we do need it, um, but it's not always super easy for me, um, not just because of my fears, but also because I'm introverted, and so I need time away from people to um, to recharge, and um, I, I like being alone, <laughs> but we just learned that we're commanded to connect with people. And so it's really not, it's not good for us to be alone for too long. Um, like if we think about Adam in the Garden of Eden, he was with God and he had all of these animals and God said, yeah, that's not, that's not enough. You need, you need a, a helper. He made Eve and it wasn't good for him to be alone. So it's not good for us to be alone. Dogs aren't enough, you know? Whoa, wait a and second. Just for the record, <laughs> she made the comment about dogs. Living in Flagstaff, I've learned I cannot make comments disparaging dogs or I'm in trouble. Now, cats are a different story. Nobody cares if you say anything <laughs> bad about cats. But, yeah, you said dogs aren't enough. And that's just this, like, it's really actually an important concept because we hear that from people all the time. It's like, well, I've just got you know, my, my, my furry friends and my furry kids, and, and I don't need people. And I, you know, man was lonely. What you're referring to, the story of Adam in Genesis 2, 3, the beginning of our Bible, he was lonely before he was sinful. And, and I think we get that backwards sometimes in the way we deal with people, the way we think about it. And even when it's hard, for whatever reason, connection with people is hard. Each and every one of us need to connect with other people. Because Adam had the perfect relationship with God. He had, like, the best dogs you've ever seen. Like, the first dogs. Like, I mean, they were, like, well-trained and, and not just dogs. He had them all. All of the animals. And maybe even cats were good back then. I don't know. But that wasn't enough. You know, he needed a life partner. He needed companionship. And we need that connection as well. That's good where you're going. Keep, keep talking about how to connect with people. Yeah, I mean, what I'm, what I'm saying is that we need people. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with also needing time to be alone and recharge. Um, I do hair for a living, so I'm around, I'm talking with my clients all day long, and, and that's always a really great time for me, but it can also be draining, where at the end of the day, I want to just go in the house and get on my phone and play games or watch videos and just completely disconnect and disengage with my family. And the temptation for me would be to just do that for the whole rest of the night until I go to bed at two in the morning or something. And so I have to kind of just set a limit for myself and, and maybe even set a timer on my phone that says, okay, you've had enough time to recharge being alone. And now you've got to go re-engage with your family and spend some time with them. 
And, um, and, and the same is true when I'm fearful about friendships. I have to spend some time connecting with God so that I can um, overcome the fear of, of connecting with people. Yeah, that's so good. Thanks for sharing that. It reminds me of this, uh, this passage in 1 John where John is one of the people Jesus connected with. One of his, it says the, the disciple, his follower, he loved the most. Um, he said this to a group of believers uh, a long time ago. He said, but suppose we walk in the light, meaning we have connection with God. That thing we're t- we've been talking about, just as uh, he is in the light, so that we're connected with God through Jesus, is what he's saying. Then we share life with one another. You, you should highlight that line, underline it, because it's so important. And he says, how? Because the blood of Jesus, his son, makes us pure from all sin. And, and I love this phrase, share life. It, it's so much deeper than just sharing space or, or being around people. It, it's this idea of connection. I mean, we think right now sometimes that like sharing a data plan is the most intimate relationship you can have with, you know, another person. And, you know, that, sorry, that was funny. Maybe you're laughing at home, but these people aren't. Um, you know, there is a way that we can overcome our fear, and it's sharing life with other people, with one another. And, and we've looked at these last several weeks is that, that love is greater than fear. Rest and, and, and healthy rhythms of our life, they, they can overcome fear. God himself is, is greater than our fear. Truth, last week we talked about uh, just some, some wonderful things we learned. The truth, and now sharing life, with one another, being fully connected is greater than our fears and can overcome the things that are holding us back. But we get it. This is difficult. It's difficult for us, and, it, and we have to constantly, like, lean into this. And, and we just want to share some practical things. So what are, what are ways to connect? What are ways that we can get past the difficulty of connection and, and our fears? And, and the first is, is simply to pray. And I know that when you're in a church, you're watching a church service online or, or a conversation about God in the Bible, that the answer to every question is Jesus and pray. You know, and so it sounds cliche, but this is so much more than just a religious activity or just a, a, a short prayer before a meal. It, it means so much more to lean in and to understand one of the most significant ways that we can connect with God and other people is through prayer. Yeah, because even if you're someone who loves to be around people, I mean, Jesus was always around people. He was with large groups of people, small groups of people, um, just one or two of the disciples. But he also was intentional about taking time by himself to pray. And sometimes you might have to stop interacting with people to spend time specifically praying to God. And, And when he was facing the fear of death on a cross, he very intentional about praying to get him through that fear. Yeah, Mark records this in his gospel, his biography of Jesus. He says this about that time of fear when he was facing death. They went to a place called Gethsemane. This is Mark 14. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He, he didn't go pray by himself. He, he brought his friends with him. Then he took Peter, James, and John along with him. He began to be deeply distressed and troubled. You see, we know that because he told his friends how he was feeling. He was vulnerable. He was honest with them. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, stay here and keep watch. And you see this movement of the, the crowd, the bigger crowd, the, 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 the three people he's with. And he went by himself and he prayed. And, and Mark and the other biographers of Jesus record that time. We see him living out that pattern. That's so good. And then uh, Philippians 4 is a verse that I know has been really for you, impactful and and meaningful on this topic? Yeah, it's one that I just memorized because I, you know, deal with anxiety a lot. But do not be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Yeah, and this week as I even saw uh, myself dealing with fear and it seemed like it was, it really just tightening its grip on me. Uh, It's amazing how when when I just go back to those simple habits of a few minutes, sitting outside, uh, writing in my journal, uh, I really start to see how God changes my perspective in, the, in dramatic ways. And I become anxious. I don't know about all of you guys and, and you watching this. I get anxious when I ca- try to control things I can't control. Like that just doesn't work. And 
unfortunately for me, I just do that all the time. Like I've got what, I mean, like control issues and some other folks out there have those. And that's hard. And, and right now, let's just be honest, these last six years, I mean six months, um, <laughs> they are a cosmic lesson for people with control issues. Like if you have control issues, this has been difficult these last few months. And, and we have to pray. We have to lean into prayer in these hard situations. And I even find myself forgetting that for a few days or a week or two at a time. And it's hard. How do you deal with that in a hard situation? How do you lean into prayer? Uh, well, I think for me, it's just become something that I have to do. I mean, so it's, it's, it's a habit. I have to pray when I'm anxious. And I almost always have to ask someone to pray for me as well. And um, sometimes prayer is the only thing that will alleviate my fear of connecting with people. Um, and sometimes it's the only thing that motivates me to connect with people. And um, I pray before I have to confront someone. I pray when I'm scared or I'm nervous, like when my husband wants me to get on stage and help him with a sermon. Um, uh, sometimes... Happy anniversary. <laughs> Sometimes my prayers are just really long journal entries. Sometimes they're short um, text conversations with a friend. Sometimes they're while I'm crying in the shower. Um, so, but for me, it all like this topic of connecting with God and connecting with people, love God, love people, they always go together for me. Like I can't do one without the other. Um, connecting with God is what helps me to connect with people. And because I connect with people, I'm also connecting with God. And so it's kind of this joint relationship, you know? Yeah, that's so good. I'm so glad you were willing uh, or unwilling, but, you know, you still came and, and shared uh, just what's on your heart and your experiences because we're, we're better for this. I know I am. And, and what we're talking about It just reminds me of a series of messages we did a few weeks ago called God, Are You There? And and we really talked uh, for several weeks about this idea of how do you and I develop an ongoing conversational relationship with God? And that's what prayer is. And and it's different for each of us because we're different and it's going to be different for you. But I would encourage you, if that's something you're like, man, I need more of that in my life, go back. They're on YouTube. You can scroll back several weeks on Facebook called God, Are You There? four or five messages on this topic of how to have just an impactful time of prayer on a regular basis. Second way that, that you and I can connect is just is things like Rooted. Uh, it's, a, it's a 10-week experience that our church offers, and, and we're going to offer Rooted this September. We're also going to offer many other uh, five to 10-week experiences and opportunities that you can take advantage of. And I just want you to know, this is an important thing. And maybe it's going to be, you're going to be in a group that's live, people in person. Maybe you're going to be in a group that's digital because of your situation and all the stuff going on. You just need that. That works for you better. We're going to have both. Because as a church, we don't do these things to just keep ourselves busy or to take you away from, you know, more Netflix. We really want to help one another follow Jesus. That is that is the story I told you earlier of Andrea and her rooted group who's helping her with her son and their situation and they're helping each other and so many great things come out of that and, and our life groups and people connecting together. That's just a great opportunity for you to do that and you go, well, yeah, maybe I do want to do that, but that's like in five or six weeks, Chris, and maybe I can't do rooted right now. Uh, the third way you can connect is, is just a much... Uh, quicker, kind of sooner opportunity is this Tuesday. We're offering uh, this connection event that we call the deck. And it's, uh, like I said, Tuesday the 11th at 8 p.m. We've changed the time. It's a little bit later. But we would just love for you to come and experience this, this cool opportunity that we've developed digitally for you to connect with other people. And what exactly does it look like? Like, I've never, I've never gone to the deck. I, that might be a little scary for me, you know, like, can I keep my face off and my audio off and just listen and not have to participate necessarily? Yeah, that's good. Like, I, 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 I get caught up in thinking everybody understands all these things. Like, they're super obvious, and you're right. They're not. So it's, just, it, it's a Zoom thing. I know we're tired of Zoom, but it's really this cool opportunity. There's a host. You don't really have to say or do anything. Like, you could just show up and, like, put a picture of Mickey Mouse on the screen and turn your camera off or whatever you want to do. But there's a host, they guide the conversation, and it's really just hearing people's stories. One of our pastors, one of the pastoral staff at our church is there each time, 
and uh, in addition to the host, and they just tell their story of finding Jesus, of following Jesus. And it's, like I said, later in the evening, you can put your kids to bed. Uh, it's just, a, it's an hour or less, and you don't have to do anything except just listen. And you have the opportunity, if you want to do more than listen, and you want to ask a question, you want to share part of your story. Uh, it's even something for those of us who've been following Jesus for a really long time, and you have your own story, it'd be great even for a friend to just hear other people's stories of what Jesus is doing in their life. And uh, I just encourage you to check it out. I'm glad you asked. And uh, so Tuesday at 11. Yeah, well, that's the kind of stuff I like. I like hearing what God has done in people's lives. So it'd be neat to... You should, I'll put it in your calendar as soon as we get done. Here's the thing, the risk of connection, it's real, but it's worth the work. It, it, it's worth the risk because you and I become convinced that others won't accept us, that, that for whatever reason we have to live isolated with limited connection. You and I were made for connection from the very beginning. That's how God designed us, and we all have flaws, and, and we all have reasons that connection is hard, and they're real. Here's the thing, though. God has given us a family that accepts flawed fearful people, and gives us a place to connect. That's what our church is about. That's what, that's what we're about as a group of people in our community following Jesus is just flawed, fearful people coming together to, to just follow our perfect Savior. And, and it is hard, but when you and I connect with God, when we connect with people, we overcome the fear. And in doing so, what I love is then, then Jesus, and, and Jesus Christ it is magnified. He gets, he gets all of the, the props, all of the praise. And so that's what we're going to do is we're just going to praise him and, and, and sing that song, Christ Be Magnified, because when we live for him, with him, connected him and other people, and the world sees that, it's an amazing thing. So I hope whether you're here in the room or you're uh, wherever you are watching this, that as, as we uh, spend some time worshiping, praising, magnifying Jesus, that you'll join us, and we're going to share in communion and more worship. But I'm going to pray. God, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to come and, and, and to just think about how do we connect with you? What, is it, what does it look like? What, is it, what gets in the way of it? And God, I just pray you would help us to connect with you more and more, to connect with other people and, and those who you've put around us to share you with, and to help us. God, I thank you for groups like Andrea's Rooted Group and, and the support we find in each other. And I thank you that, that so many people in our church, our community, are finding that same thing. God, help it be more and more connection for your glory and your honor. Christ, we just pray you be magnified through our lives. In Jesus' name, we, we ask all this. Amen. Stand, we can worship together. Were creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one and cry? Then from north to south and east to west, we hear Christ be magnified. Were the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky. From the rivers to the mountain tops, we will Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified. In Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified. 
We are going to take a couple minutes here, and we're going to observe communion. Uh, and so if you've uh, collected the elements here in the room, if you don't have them, we've got some little prepackaged goodies. If you're joining with us at home, uh, feel free to slip off to the pantry right now and, and grab a little piece of bread or a cracker and some juice. We're going to take this together. I'm going to do the same right now. Whether you've got a little wafer and some juice or some bread and wine, what the elements are matters quite a bit less than what they stand for, what they represent. And us observing this practice every week, it's our way of doing exactly what we just sang about, magnifying Christ from the altar of our life. An altar is a place of sacrifice. And no one made a greater sacrifice than Jesus himself. The perfect son of God. The Bible calls him the lamb of God because in those days a lamb was a living sacrifice that was laid down and given 
to cover the sins, the transgressions, the failings of the people. But Christ paid that all for us. He gave his body so willingly. He shed his blood. And that's what we remember here today with these little emblems. The, the bread, the cracker being his body given for us and the juice representing his blood. Let's take the bread together. And let's drink from the cup, remembering his blood. God, our prayer this morning is that you would be magnified. Your goodness would be evident in our lives. And we remember here this morning that nothing and no one is greater than you. That's why we praise you. That's why we worship you. That's why we eat and drink these elements this morning, to remember you in your greatness. And we just ask that you work in and through us, that, that you connect us together so that we can not only overcome the fears that prevent us, but that in that connection, we would see you magnified. That's our prayer this morning, God. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to spend some more time in worship. Um, and you know, this next song is familiar to so many of us, um, but it just talks about that love of God that's so inconceivable to us. But truth is, he chases us down. He pursues us. So if you're in the room, I invite you to stand. If you're worshiping along home, hopefully you got this on your surround sound system, just go ahead and crank that volume up a few notches and just let this spirit of worship just speak to your soul. spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't turn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless. Love God, yeah, yeah. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me I felt no worth, oh, you paid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending wreck Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found these 99. And I couldn't turn it, I don't 
deserve it Still you give your silk away And only all by will may live our ending Reckless love of God Yeah song, let's just come together and sing about this good grace of our God. Hold your head up high 
kingdom that we live for. We can't do that unless we are connected together. We were not built to do this alone. And if you find yourself in the grips of fear, reach out to a friend. Be connected. Don't go it alone. Take that with you this week as you go. Let's go help one another follow this friend of ours, Jesus. Amen. Amen.